Hey guys, these are just some of the things you can teach your child using a sensory bin. Make sure you check out my video on using sensory bins to learn how to teach your child with these bins. Also, these can be done with bags or bottles as well. Take a look and see how I put together this ocean beach themed bin. If you have questions, comment down below. Hey guys, so welcome to my kitchen. We are making an ocean sensory bin. I did make a farm one and I have another video for why you should do sensory bins with your kids and what is the purpose. So really just everything you can get into and how to use them. So today we're doing the ocean one. I have one of these containers just like I did use for my farm bin. I got this for 88 cents at Walmart. If you're gonna do a lot of these for a classroom or anything like that, check down below. I have some um, just bulk ones for you guys from Amazon. So you can get ones that are a little heavier or just a bunch more. So I got this crazy sand and I will put it down in the comments below. It is just kinetic sand. It came in a pack of three. I have blue, green, and I have orange. So I'm gonna use the green and orange in my jungle box. So take a look out for that video as well. But this is our ocean one. So this stuff is pretty cool. All you have to do is open the bag. I kind of thought there was gonna be a little more to it. What you're gonna do is open this big clump here. And that is all that is in this one. You're gonna loosen it with your hands and your fingers. So it'll be more like sand, just kind of start pulling it apart like sand. And I'm just gonna smush it. I don't want mine to be all clumped together into anything. So I'm gonna separate it with my hands a little bit. And this is gonna serve as my ocean water. I don't have a ton of it. Um, I do wish I had more, but to be honest, this stuff is a little bit more challenging to find anymore. And with younger kids too, it just kind of gets a little bit messy. So I think having a little bit in here to serve as our ocean water is gonna be good. But again, ocean themed, beach themed box, beach as well. I'm gonna do primarily sand for this box, but look, you can see it's already growing just in my hand. Watch that get bigger and bigger and bigger. We just took it out of the box. So I'm gonna bring it up closer to you guys. Bigger, bigger, bigger. You're gonna separate it and watch it grow. That's really hard to see on there. But <laughs> I think you guys will have fun with this. Your kids will like to touch it. You can also do these with regular sand. That's fine too. But what I have found is these are a little less messy. So I'm gonna separate that all out. It doesn't look quite as much like sand though as some of the things do. So that's our little ocean water just kind of shoved over in the corner here. I'm gonna add more things to it later. And we can do some molds and things with that too. So the primary, media i guess you could say or source at the bottom here is going to be these dried pentagons i really like to use these for a reason the colors can be more like dirt for some of like garden boxes dinosaur boxes anything like that and they don't quite make as much of a mess so i'm going to separate mine out here and here's how i'm going to separate them i have these cool Stones, so they're going to serve as a kind of in-between there. I'm just going to put mine in between that so it creates kind of a little bit of a wall. They are going to get all mixed together, so heads up, don't like panic about that. So, well, so far we have like three layers, which of course even when I move the box, it's going to get like that for you guys. So I think maybe we may just even mix them all in, but as it grows, as that sand grows, we're going to keep it separated out a little bit. I'm going to save the rest of these for later for my jungle box. It's a huge, huge box. I may actually be getting more of these to add if you find it's not enough. But that is going to be enough for me for now. And then I have these blue stones that I'm going to mix in with my ocean. So the reason I'm using these decorative little stones, I'm making a mess, might I add in here, just to start, this is going to be a fun contained mess later, moms, is so <laughs> that you can see what I'm getting in here and that there are different textures. So, so far we have three textures in here. We have these kidney beans or pinto beans. They're dried, whatever you wanna get. We've got these stones, which I have some different colors based on what they're going in. And then you've got the sand. So you've got three different textures already in your ocean beach box. So again, I've just got a little bit of ocean water sand in mine. And then I'm gonna add some different things to my box. So, get that out of there. I have a bath toy, 
So if I wanted to maybe take that stand out and put it in there, this actually has a little hole in it and we can squirt water, which we're gonna keep in the box, but I'm gonna put my fish in the water side, which he'll move and it's okay. I've got these. They actually came with that kit, which I love. They are just molds. So you could use them to mold with the ocean or you could fill them with sand. So your child can work on filling them. <laughs> I'm going to add that. I've got an octopus, a starfish, a fish, and a dolphin. Um, I'm also going to put this on here. This would be more fun with the sand, but you can see we'll be able to spin that and it's just something else that can move and be shaken. I think once the sand maybe will a little be a little bit easier to work with, then we'll add in things like that too, but I do have a little sifter. That's primarily just going to be used for the sand later, but even just filling up capacity and filling things kind of serve as a shovel, so I think that'll be good. And if you have a bigger box, these are just bath toys. You can do these and swap some of these things out. You can swap out your beans for water. And I'm gonna add in some of these cotton balls. So I'm gonna add two. I always add two for each color. Two yellow, because we do have a couple yellow things in here. Two blue, we've got the ocean. And unfortunately, I don't have purple or orange, so we're just gonna keep it like that. And we'll see, we do have green for our starfish, so it's a different color green, but we can talk about shades of green. So really simple, really easy to set up. I wanted to do this with you guys. It's a little chaotic setting these up live, but again, crazy sand. These are super fun. Um, really like these. They do sell these things in like one pound, two pound kits too. I just got simple because I personally think the sand is going to be fun for him, but I think it'll be really cool to be able to work with the beans in here as well. He seems to really enjoy those at this current point, so it's based on your child's preference. You could also do this with salt and diet blue. I think that would be another fun one. But take a look here at this. Let's bring it up in. I'm going to show you inside the box. Just wanted you guys to get a good view of what this box actually looks like close up. So again, scoop. It's not going to sift through because I don't have it set up like that. But if I want to do this with water or change this out to something smaller, I do have some sand from my aquarium. Aquarium rock stuff is always fun too. So primarily sand. We're doing a beach box. And then I do have this sand here. And my fish and I wanted you guys to get a closer look at these these are just those decorative pebbles that like every mom has so pick some to match colors up with and you can see I put some lighter colored ones over here then you're gonna go with the sand you can just dig for those and we can learn some vocabulary things I would recommend doing are talking about color you could even get like I said add water change it but this would be your water which is sand so it's a little more confusing but it's a different texture to feel and keep your kid engaged you can actually use these too fill up and work on capacities like what's actually full or you could just mold something in the sand here so those are pretty fun too they do a good job and I think you're really going to enjoy using them work on matching up the colors to the shovel as well as some of the other little things in here the water talk about different shades tons of vocabulary tons of activities I think it's important when you are introducing new subjects whether it is ocean animals colors whatever you're doing is doing it in a couple different ways so these sensory box are a great reinforcer they're going to keep your child engaged for a while and then I encourage you to look at literacy as well so I want to share some books with you guys too let's do that Hey guys, so we just finished making our sensory bin, our farm sensory bin, yeehaw, down on the farm. So if you haven't already, check out my video for how to make the sensory bin and take a look at why you should use sensory bins. I love them. I think they're awesome for enforcing vocabulary that's already been learned and learning new vocabulary. But I also think it's great to incorporate literacy and these are some amazing, amazing farm books that I love. I use with my students, I use with my son. I think they're awesome because again, they are those multi-sensory experience books. So we've got these polka dot books, which I love. All they do is pop. But they're awesome because they have that nice, you feel it and you hear it, you can see that it's popped and it's like a completion activity. So it helps keep their attention longer and you want them to finish. So these are awesome because great pictures, really exciting. Some awesome words that include sounds, not saying them, but you can say them for your child. They can count them and there's some awesome early vocabulary. 
And that goes along with our stuff, like you see the barn in the back. There's our farmer, our source of water, the lake or pond, and the sun. You can talk about fencing, the green, green grass, what the cows eat. I'm not gonna go through everything with you guys, but I really love this book. Again, there's a water trough. We had that in our sensory bin. So just really helping enforce that vocabulary. You're gonna see a lot of the same things in here and another way to help them learn. So you see the ducks, the pond, and you can always add to your sensory bins too, like add a frog and a pond and lily pad or create another box that could go with your farm learning experience. So these are really awesome. Tractors in the back, take a look at those. I have these for the, in the links down below if you can't find them, but there are tons of polka dot books. I love them. Also, I'm a big fan of Eric Carlisle. These pictures are just really engaging for the kids. They keep their attention. They bring them in. They're so interested. The colors are super fun. And this one I love because you can use it with your child as they grow older or with older kids because they're actually going to take these and match it to the sounds. My little boy loves just when he sees these big pictures here. He will sit for hours and find the big animal. He doesn't necessarily find this button right away without help, but the noises are great. Here's some sounds for horse. They're really clear, you can hear them. And even for things that don't really make a noise, like my son comes to know this caterpillar, makes fun little dance, and he dances. You can add emotion to things, but I really encourage you guys to check this out. You can see, here's some more preview of the book. I'm not gonna read it to you guys, but I do recommend taking a look at these, especially including them with more sensory experiences, just like the sensory bin or bag and transfer this if it's a little bit advanced for your little one. But I hope you guys love these. If you have questions, please comment down below. And if you're looking for these, definitely in the comments section. I have them down below. And I'm so excited you stopped by today. I hope you have fun down on the farm with your kiddos. Bye.